Yo guys, so I made my decision. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this lens. Now you might think I'm crazy for doing this, but just the overall advantages that this lens has of a better kit lens is just too much. Now I'm talking about the 15 mil to 45 cheapo plasticky electronical zoom lens that everybody hates which actually is quite a little gem. It's not only sharp, it's not only much wider at 50 millimeters, it's a way different than 18 mil. I'm gonna show you in a second, compare side to side, but actually I found that the image quality is not that much different, especially when you're talking about videos. Now for stills, definitely you will have edge to edge sharpness with this lens, but this lens is no slouch, it's still pretty good. The main reason I got this lens is just for the ultra wide uh, kind of field of view and also for the close focuses distance. I mean, we could get pretty close to this thing and it should be focusing. I haven't tested how close I can get, but I'm sure it's pretty close. And I'm sorry if this is too close for comfort. Now, definitely that's one of the Achilles heels of this lens. Even though it has a nice sweet f2.8 because it doesn't focus so close, you don't get as much bokeh as if I were to use this lens, get a little bit closer, and we could actually get even more depth of field than I was to get with this lens. Let me show you what I mean. All right, and you could already see the difference, right? I switched over to the 18 mil kit lens and it's a lot tighter. I have to stretch out my arm to get a, a similar view of the to the 15 mil, but the 15 mil I had it like this close and this is just too close. So that's why I'm really just deciding to keep this lens and sell the 18 mil. Even though this is a cheap old rattly lens, but it only cost me $150, meaning I could get two of these for the price of one of these. So like I said before, ooh, this is a little heavier too, a little heavier. Wow. So advantage of this is the weight, the size, the field of view, and also how close we could get. I'm sure this can't get that close. See all these image and shooting advantages of this lens just make it an overall keeper for me for my personal needs. I'm sure a lot of people that go outside, do more blogging style, could benefit more using a metal mount, getting a, a nice metal frame lens that is rigid. You have the aperture controls and whatnot, but shooting with the X-H1, I have so many dials and buttons everywhere that I have my aperture, I have the shutter and ISO. So I don't need anything else. And for $150, I think this is a steal. You're getting a nice sharp wide angle lens with autofocus and this thing is gonna be shipped off to someone who's gonna purchase it here in Japan. So I had a blast with this lens. This is one of my favorite kit lenses ever. But you know what? This YouTube thing, my Instagram picture photography, I don't do it for a job. It's just my hobby. So that's why I just buy, sell lenses and uh, yeah. It's time to say goodbye to the 18 mil. So that was it, that was my decision. I was actually debating whether to keep the 18 mil and sell the 23 F2, which I haven't been using so much. It hasn't gotten a lot of love, but recently it's been raining and I put it back on and I've been getting some amazing images and that's when I decided, forget it. I'm just gonna sell that one, keep the 23 mil and just get a nice wide lens ultra wide lens with this 15 mil. So up next, I'm gonna compare this 15 mil, how it compares to a 12 mil. So let's go ahead and switch to that. I got the Pergear 12 mil F2. We're gonna switch and see how much of a difference it is because actually that Pergear lens is going out as well. What if I'm peak, where is my peaking? All right, here we go. This is about right, right here. And that is actually is just one of those things that we have to deal with when we shoot with a manual lens. You gotta pre-focus before you start shooting. Hopefully, I am in focus. Hopefully, I did that measurement right. But that's how you could get the whole vlog style with a manual lens. You gotta pre-focus on your hand at the distance that you're gonna have the camera, and you gotta keep the camera there. 
don't move it up and down those strings your arm back and forth because you will go out of focus so hopefully i'm in focus this is the per gear 12 millimeter f2 and this lens is actually pretty nice i love the ultra wide i love the f2 the minimal focus distance it's amazing you could get really close and blur out the background but again the 50 mil does even more it gets closer and it just even at f3.5 it just blurs everything like it's almost like a prime lens i kid you not i'm going to show you some samples right now you be the judge and here we go we're back to the 15 mil again as you could compare as opposed to the 12 mil earlier it's not a big difference but it's there i have to admit the 12 mil is really wide you could get a lot more in the frame i think 15 mil is like the sweet spot for vlogging it's not too too super distorted ultra wide like a 12 mil or a 10 mil so everything looks re relatively well <laughs> proportion and it actually is still wide enough to be able to use for blogging but the best selling point for this lens is that close focus distance i mean check this out guys i could just bam put this right in your face look how close we can get oh my goodness the lens hood is gonna hit what you could still focus no way there's no way you could focus on that right there oh my goodness look at this the, like the lens hood is almost touching the front element the lens hood is almost touching the front element that's how close we could get with this thing and as opposed to a manual lens i don't have to pre-focus like i did with the per gear 12 mil so that's why these two lenses are going we got the eight. Oh man. Oh, oh, oh. Hot. Okay, come on. No scars. What? what the place is this? Hopefully, this is gonna polish off. Oh, Kido. And that is one of the advantages of this lens. Alright, so where was I? Yeah, I was telling you that's the reason why these two lenses are going. I have. This one covers, has the zoom range cover for blogging and all that good stuff. This also has the ultra wide cover. And the best thing about it is this actually focuses really close. So there you have it. My reasons for ending up with this poor quality plasticky automatic zoom lens. You know, I don't care so much. I don't, who zooms like back and forth so much? Who does that? I never done it. All I care about is the image is sharp, clean. That's good, I'm happy. Yeah, let me just show you some more of the results I got from this lens. So guys, these are my final thoughts on the 
I'm gonna call it, I don't know if this is an official nickname, but I'm just gonna throw it out there. But I'm gonna call it the Plastic Wonder, because this thing is so plasticky, cheap, but it's actually sharp. Something that I noticed before I forget, I wanna touch on this point is the autofocus is so underrated. The focusing on this 15 to 45 millimeter zoom lens is really good. And from my test, the test results that I got and I observed is actually more accurate and more steady than the 18 to 55. That's saying a lot because that lens is like two, three times more expensive than this one. I don't know why. I don't understand why the XF lineup is supposed to be like their L line series and the XC is kind of like the cheaper EF, Canon EF lenses. It's kind of like that. Yeah, but it, it's actually performing really well. The sharpness is there on the still side. This lens was actually sharper again than the XF lens. Now on the ultra wide side, 15 versus 12. Yes, 12 millimeter was much wider, but if you can take into consideration how soft the corners were on that 12 mil on the per gear, you know, if you want to clean that up and you crop in, you're basically getting a 15 mil. But this 15 mil is just sharp edge to edge. I'm like, what in the world? This is what I was looking for. You know, a perfect balance between ultra wide, having a nice wide range zoom, as well as just having a very light kit for on the go vloggings, for on the go here and there shooting, you know, quick run and shoot kind of thing. That's all I wanted. And I thought the XF lens was a little bit overkill. So when I'm seriously shooting, I basically shoot only prime. And when I want to do run and gun, I'll grab the zoom lens, but it was just overkill for my needs and this little plastic wonder surprised me so it's a keeper what do you guys think did i make the right move no uh, let me know your comments on the section down below but thank you so much for sticking around to the end and uh if you enjoy this comparison i know it wasn't scientific it wasn't <laughs> perfect but we all love comparisons here in youtube so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys on the next one peace